Hello everybody, welcome to part 4 of Siberia. We're just gonna get right into it. We are at Arabald, Arabald, whatever you want to call it. What a cool looking airship. I just got finished playing part 3. Took a lunch break and there you go with the phone again! Hello? What do you think you're doing, Kate? I wanted updates. I wanted results. Certainly, Mr. Morrison. We all do. Down on the ground, we're doing all we can, but there's no new developments. Kate, I don't think you understand the urgency of this situation. Universal toys are on my back and digging in. I can't hold them off much longer. You're putting the firm in a very tricky situation. I am very sorry, but a slight mishap or two has meant that I've had to modify my mission temporarily. Miss Walker, you're walking on a minefield here. I don't have to underline that this affair is Class A Priority Numero Uno. Hot! I am only too aware of that, Mr. Marson, and believe me, I am doing all I possibly can. But this mission is really no piece of cake. You can have all the cake you want and eat it, too, when you get home. Next time I call you, I want something concrete, something solid. I want results. You understand? Results! Yes, Mr. Marson. Okay. We'll go this way right now. I know we have to go into the building to the left. What was the left at the time? Yeah, so... There's really nothing here. This is a nice view. The scenery in the background throughout this whole game has been pretty cool. I've enjoyed it, like, with the mountains and all that. Anyway, I just wanted to show this area. There's really nothing to see right now. Wait. And as you can see, here is the train thing. So, spoiler alert, there will be a tra the train will be coming over here later. So this is our first time uh, in a place without Oscar. Gotta say, I, I miss Oscar. He's a, he's a funny guy. He's a funny automaton. Look at this beautiful fountain. That is so beautiful. And Kate agrees with me. So let's go inside. Let me guess, he's Good too morning, busy sir. to help me. Good day to you, ma'am. And welcome to the Hotel Kronsky. I don't expect you've made a reservation, have you? Well, no matter. We've got a few rooms left with a sea view. By far the best on offer. Uh, well, actually I wasn't counting on staying in Arrowbad. I see. It's like that, then. Uh, so, what can I do for you? I want to meet someone who lives here. That's very inconvenient. None of my customers said they were expecting someone. You can't just turn up like that. We've got a very strict policy. In this day and age, the hotel ain't too open to, um, impromptu visits from any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Uh, please. I absolutely must speak with her. It's very important. If it was that important. All you had to do was ring the hotel. But people come here to rest, you see, to get away from the world, which ain't turning so good these days. Uh, don't let me keep you. Good day to you, ma'am. Honestly, if I could have called, I would have called, but I couldn't. So, please, can you bend the rules just a little, sir? Ma'am, in this hotel, we don't bend nothing for no one. With respect. Sir... I really could use your help. I'm sorry, ma'am, but my helping hand only serves my hotel guests. Well, let me just say that by helping me out, you'd also be helping out one of your very own guests. Ma'am, I'm not to be wound around anyone's little finger, you hear? It's a real shame that there aren't any guests at your hotel. We had our moment of glory, but now it's all in the past. That's all. Doesn't it make you sad? Why should it? Once upon a time I met the greatest of the great. Now I got my memories. Sweet memories. Usually I travel on this fantastic mechanical train. Haven't I seen some kind of a station here? Is it possible to arrive here by train then? Of course it is. What were you suggesting? Uh, if I'm not very much mistaken, that's your air balloon I see getting blown to shreds in the hotel garden. Oh yeah, the airship. That's a bit different. I just borrowed that to make the round-trip journey to Arrowbad. Whatever. You better think about getting it off there, and quick. With that contraption on my lawn, some of my clientele might have a relapse. 
Okay, we're done talking to him. Well, thanks anyway. So basically, he's not going to help us. He's not, he's not going to let us see uh, Helena. So we open that up. He's too busy watching the TV, the, the game or whatnot. To be paying attention to us. So we can't go through the door. Watch. The door's locked. Of course. But I've still got to get in there. We didn't even have to check the door to know it's locked because every door is locked in this game. Except for the closet door. So then we're gonna take this. It's detergent. Take a wild guess what we're gonna do with it. Go on, take your time. Take your time to think about it. What do you think? What do you think? And you are right, we are going to put the detergent in the fountain, and we already opened the curtain for this dude to see it. But he's not watching us do it. He's watching the game. So there we go. And there you go! Now she can wash her clothes. I'm wearing the same clothes for a few days, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, we can. Oh, I didn't get this the last time. Adenor Hotels. Hotel brochure. I don't really care. You again? You're beginning to really overstep the mark. I warn you, one more and I'm going to. But what the hell's going on over there? Why is it me gets hell to pay when there's already too much work to do? Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. What's a mop gonna do in this scenario? She put that whole thing in detergent and you're never gonna get that up with a mop. And it's outside anyway. I mean, whatever, I don't care, he's out of my hair. I don't need to do that. I know. Nope, come on, Kate. Focus, Kate. Kate. So we're gonna read this. We're gonna look for what's her name? Helena Romanski? We can see it. So it's... So it's up at the list of client names, you have... One, two, three, four. Helena Romanski, she was... Or she arrived on January 10th, 1981. So we're in until like the 80s or whatever. And all that stuff happened with Hans and Anna with Hans's accident back in the 30s. So just so we know how much time has passed and all that. Her status was a day visitor. But she hasn't departed yet. And I don't know what the date is for today. Residential code access card. So she has an access card. Not a code number. But we can use any one of these other code numbers, I think, to get in to somewhere for a resident. We'll try to remember 1503. If you look all the way to the residential code, all the way on the right. I don't remember if I needed them or not. But we'll use it. If we have to, I just can't remember. I'll push that button, and now I can go in. Right, come on. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That's a nice thing to look at. Let's go this way. Let's not go this way. We will be going that way. Yeah. Let's see, we can't do this at all. And... There we go, here. Yeah, these guys. Oh, these are such a delight. I'm sorry to disturb you. Yeah, I think I can thrust with my queen through there. 
Mm, unless... I can see that I'm disturbing you. Uh, hey, no, no, no. Checking two moves. Hmm. Maybe I'll squeeze him with my bishop instead. Nothing like a good squeeze from a bishop. Okay, oh, I wouldn't like to disturb you any longer. So two naked guys in the water. Two naked guys in the water. Possibly naked, I don't know. They might be wearing bathing suits. We come back here in a bit. We're just not going to do it just yet. I wonder how that works. Yeah, we'll come back here shortly. So, naked dudes in the water, playing chess. So let's do this. Oh, we don't go in there yet? No, oh, we don't go in there at all then. Okay. So now we are on the other side. Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this real quick. This doesn't come into play till later, but I want to grab the glass now. Because later I may forget how to get here. The way my memory is. I did that. And, um... Here, we came that way, so now we do this. Now we'll come here. And this is actually the other end of when we... Uh, whatchamacallit. Here, I'll show you. Okay, that was the other end of this room. So we'll do this the natural way. We'll do this. Hello there. Good afternoon, miss. Are you the hotel barman? My name is James, miss. James, the automaton nurse. I am not a barman. I'm sorry. I didn't want to upset you. If you don't mind, miss, I would appreciate it if you would just be a little more rigorous in the terms you employ in the future. I'm looking for Madame Romansky. Do you know where she is? 3.30 to 4.30 p.m., Madame Romansky takes her daily constitutional on the pier. Tea is served at five o'clock sharp. Is it possible to go see her? As you wish, but do pay attention to the salt wind. Okay, I think that's all we need Well, right I'm going, now. James. See you later, maybe. It would be a pleasure to see you again, miss. Okay, so just to show you real quick, you see... First off, you see over here the, the water? That's from the pool that we were just at. And, yeah, see, this uh, this connects to this. As you can see. So, and there's nothing here for me to pick up, right? No. So let me come here. This is where I think that whole situation matter. Uh, that whole code number. What was the thing? We'll try, what was it, 1503? That doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Okay, well, let's go take a little look around. You know, now that I think about it, I think there was another room somewhere. That we haven't gone to yet. That I think has a code number in it. No, I think there's another room. So is it fifteen oh three? Access card. I so maybe we need someone's access car. Well, I think there's another room somewhere. Somewhere by the pool. I think there's... Kind of like a locker room type area. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this one more time. Um... Oh, you know what? I just realized Hel Helena's name is put in more than once. So, yeah, I see, like, she's the fourth name, and then if you go down a little bit further, like, midway, the uh, arrival day is May 6th, 1981. See, there, she's a, a resident, and, oh, her card number is 1270, okay. So, that is actually... 
1270, right? This is so hard to see sometimes. And that's it, right? So she was in twice. So she was in the first time at an access card. And I thought I could just put anybody's resident code in. But apparently you have to put hers in. I guess because she's out there. 1270. 1270 was it. I still, for some reason, it must be a different game. I could have sworn there was like some sort of like room that has an access card. Like, a, uh, like a number on it. So 1270. I don't remember 1270. Hi, James. Hello, James. Darn it! Doesn't it work? It doesn't work. Just as I thought. Wasn't it 1270? Okay, so... What have I done wrong? Ah, now this door is open. Okay, maybe I needed to do that first. Get rejected, and there you go. Okay, so it's not a... I guess it's kind of a locker room. Not like a gym locker room. But it's a room that has these little lock box things on it. Alright, alright, what? Well, okay, come on. So I wasn't crazy. Okay, it's here. Kronsky Hotel access card temporary code 0968098068 Finally Okay, I already know you had to pick this thing up on the side let me do this first. For some reason, she can't, like, breathe the air. I don't remember what the problem is. So, she has to put this on. I don't remember if they talked about it yet. I think I have to look at this thing real quick. Okay, so... If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Excellent. Now let's go. Look at this long... walk. Key, okay, can't you walk? Why is she walking down the side instead of the middle? That is the weirdest thing. Look at that ship. Kate, walk for crying out loud. Kate! Here she is, Helena Romansky. Madam Romansky? Madam Helena Romansky? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich, the old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? Uh, not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American. A lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You have come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left... Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel mask did pinch so. I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. You okay. back oh, here Jesus. again? How dare you show your damn face right here? Get out of here immediately! Please. I absolutely must find... 
Miss Romansky! Oh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry she managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Romansky, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. Please treat Miss Walker with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madam Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now. Yeah. How about that? Okay. I can already tell you we gotta take this. We take the bell. James's bell. So we move this down to the other one we saw. Well, yeah, it might be too late. Yeah, see, we do it, right? And then we ring it. But it's... It's not going to work for James because he's too far away. James is all the way at the inside the building, and she's all the way at the end of the pier over here, so he can't hear it. So we take the bell. Which, for some unknown reason, I can't take. There we go. Don't know why that happened. Let me bring it down to the other one, which is a lot closer. James will hear it. Th there's nothing to see down here, but this is... Like, look at this. This is nice. Look at that ship. And I think it's cool. Just to look at it real quick. Because we appreciate the art of it. Let's go around this way. Not that there's anything to see. See you soon, Madam Romansky. Okay, let's go back. Kate puts up with a lot of shit just, just to get this stupid contract fixed, figured out and finalized. So here we go. Oh, come on, dude. Do it one more time. Okay, forget this. He just doesn't want to do. No, you have to do this. I think you have to do that, but I don't know what the point of that is because he doesn't come out anyway. Come on. Oh, I guess I still have to wear it. No Wait, point no. weighing myself down. Yeah. Okay. I thought I couldn't figure that out. Couldn't figure out why it wouldn't let me put it back on. There's James. Come on, I clicked James, it. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Katie Poo. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person? What would she like? Does she remember Frank? I'm up. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yeah, she's living in Arlbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arlbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the air I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romansky's a uh, kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin, 
I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for. But I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. There we go. These automatons, by the way, are such babies, they can't go outside. What, can I not talk to her? Okay, hold on. Do I need to go back in here and talk to her? I can't believe it. I it's do. a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm -hmm. People still talk about me. Oh, dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were, how you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment, and because of it I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky, this Borodin is one of your biggest fans. If you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh, aren't you going a bit far there? I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. Madame Romansky. Please understand, I would never have come so far to disturb you if I didn't really need your help. I understand, my dear, but my health is failing me, as does my voice. Believe me, no one is sadder than I. You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theatres around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let this spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. Look, please, you absolutely have to come with me to Comicalsgrad. It's the only way I'm going to get my train back and be able to carry on my journey. Your train? That's right. I've been traveling on this amazing locomotive with this automaton engineer. He isn't a million light years away from your James. Do you hear that, James? And automaton? You have a twin brother? How delightful. And I thought I was the only person alive able to put up with such a peculiar butler. Permit me to express my surprise, madam. Surely the fact that I remain in your service guarantees my uniqueness. Oscar isn't my butler, though. He has a great independence of thought. Sometimes he does whatever suits him. Just like you, James. Isn't that funny? Madam, we'll not be surprised to hear that she is strongly advised not to undertake a journey that, 
unless I am very much mistaken, will tire her needlessly. James, only one of us will make that decision, and that person is me. I am very curious to meet your automaton, my dear. Where is it? He had to stay with the train in Kamkalsgrad. The director used his hands for the final touches on his pianist. It's the same pianist that will accompany you when you sing. How quaint! Another automaton. And this one can he even play along with me? Play for me? Ah, oh, why does my voice abandon me so now? Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wollerberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail, the one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing! That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child, it is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. And there you have it. We are going to have to find out the recipe for that cocktail. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. And I... It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. And let me see. Hotel brochure is at this... Wait. Hotel... I don't know hotels. So the Moritz Hotel. And Oh yeah, okay, so Paris, France, the Moritz, you can see it's four six four three three six four three. Which There we go. Hello, Hotel Moritz? The reception here. Can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Hello, Hotel Bar? Hi. I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? 
I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see, old George, now he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but if you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly? Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mambo. Helena, yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right, I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say. Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me. So there you go. That is the recipe. We have it. Let's go here. One second. I want to put this glass down. Oh, wait. I don't think I do the glass yet. Madam Romance. Right, no, no. Do you have my cocktail? Okay, no, no. No, but. I quite agree with you, madam. This young lady clearly is quite in. Okay. No, don't. I'm going to do Go that on, again. My I didn't. I, I skipped it by mistake. But I want to hear her uh, talk to Madam trash. Romansky. Would it be possible to... Do you have my cocktail? No, not yet, but... No buts, dear. No ifs. If I don't get my cocktail, I won't go with you to Comco's grad. What are you waiting for? Did you hear that, James? This situation is quite unbearable. I quite agree with you, madam. This young lady clearly is quite incompetent. We really should abandon the whole idea. No, don't say that. This cocktail is important to me as well. Go on, my dear. Show us what you're made of. Oh, diva right there. Jeez, rude. I didn't even mean to talk to you. There we go. That was crystallized honey and a lemon. Okay, so I already know from before we're going to take the honey. So we're going to turn this thing and bubble it up. Nice steamy water. And we are going to put the honey in there. Now we have liquid honey. Okay, so... What do we have? We have... Where'd the vodka go? We have the vodka from the other guy, the colonel from the other place. Now, where do I put the vodka? I think I put it... Here, right? Yeah, put the vodka there. And the lemon... You can see down here, you see right now I'm on the, that, right, I'm on the ice, and that's the lemon. So I put it above that. Right now? Where do I put the damn lemon? Oh no, I see where I put the lemon. Okay, I put the honey next to it, right? Don't I put the honey? Oh, what is that? Oh, there we go. That's the, um... We'll come back to this in a minute. We'll come back to that in a minute. I gotta find where- I think I put the honey there. Yeah, put the honey there. And I don't know if I do the glass yet. Do I do the glass yet? Right, we will see. So now we will read this again, the musical score. This is related 
Oh, Jesus. This is related to the to the recipe. Okay, now you see the blue caraco, caraco, however you pronounce that. I forgot. Okay, okay, so there's two things on this recipe, uh, this paper that we have to look at. We, we have the vodka, which is the second to the uh, last one on the very bottom. You see right there? Vodka. It's right above rum and right under whiskey. And the blue caraco, caraco, I don't know how you pronounce it. You see that's under, um, you see where that is. One, two, three, four, five, fifth one from on the top. White wine, red wine, blah, 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 all the way down to the blue Caraco. Now, the one thing I do know is the orange, the two orange, um, dots for rum and tequila, that starts right here. That starts these down here below this keyboard. So, like, that would be the rum. And then this and that and all that, so... So vodka is the second one. So vodka is number two on that keyboard. The blue, the blue caraco, caraco, whatever, that is the third one. So the second key and the third key are the two important ones to, to worry about on this. So that's all we need to know from that. So we need to turn this on. So now it is on. And the very first thing on the recipe I think they said was vodka. So we will be pushing that one button. No, the the, the second button. Push the second button. And it takes the vodka. And we'll do the third one. And it takes that one. Okay, so now we do honey, lemon, and ice cubes. So we do the honey... Which is that honeycomb picture right there. Honey. Lemon. And then we do the ice cubes, which is here. And we are... Oh shit, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. This is supposed to- Oh crap. You see these two things, the bass and the treble symbols? That's here. Right here. This switches from bass to treble. So, I needed to do that before I put the- The second bottle in there. Shit. So that's- Anyway, that's the barman. And that's the last one that shakes it. But I guarantee you that's gonna be absolutely terrible. I screwed it up. Oh, my God. Oh. From what backwater of hell did you find this potion? Are you trying to poison me? It's a... A, a blue Helena. That is impossible. The blue Helena had a color that was... Like... Um, and an aroma like... Um, you understand? Its texture was not quite so... Um, one thing is for certain. This is no Blue Helena. Make an effort, my child. Right. I guess I'll try out another mix. Okay, well, a little dramatic right there. Anyway, so... First off, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start from fresh. So we're gonna turn that on. Okay, so it's turned on right now. So we're going to read this. So, okay, I'm going to match the symbols to the drink. Okay, is that symbol? Okay. So we're going to do this. Right. I think yeah, it's already... Let me see. Yeah, see, when you do that, it goes to the other one. So it's either this. The Straight up is already the is, the... is the one. And then it just turns to that one. That's the only two sections... The only two um options you get. Okay, so we're going to start this all over again. Okay, let me go back in here. Okay, we just did that. So now it's already set to the one we want for vodka. Okay. Oh, wait, we're going the wrong way. Now we do that one. 
Now we do that. That sounds different. Okay. So then, then it's I think it's honey, honey, lemon, and ice, right? Honey. And we have lemon. And then we have ice. And then we go to the barman. <laughs> I think that was it. I think that's it. My voice. God, that is atrocious. Horrific. It was too good to be true. George's blue Helena is powerless. Ineffective on the voice of an old woman. But your voice is perfect. Don't be so down on yourself. You just need to warm up a bit, that's all. After all these years, it's to be expected. No, no, I am very grateful for all your efforts, but really, I cannot go on stage with such a puny, pathetic voice. My performance would be so poor. I would get such bad reviews. You've just got to get your confidence back, hasn't she, James? I must concur, madam. It sounds to me like your voice is fully restored. James, be quiet. You are a sniveling little creep. Okay, this is where the glass comes into play, actually. I just remembered the glass had nothing to do with the recipe. It has to do the with blue this. Helena really does have a magical effect. Your voice is sensational. I am not convinced. If my voice has really returned, it is not ready. It is still not powerful enough. I tell you, you're wrong. The Calm Calls grad director is going to be amazed. My dear, how little you know. I remember a time, madam, when you would test your vocal prowess by breaking crystal tableware and decorations. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Shards of crystal. I could never do that now. My voice. My God, what have I done? My voice has returned. Did you hear that, James? My voice, my voice has returned. Your voice is still as magnificent as ever, madam. But please don't forget, you're no spring chicken these days. Time has taken its toll. And you're not the toy boy you once were either, James. I hope you have fun on your own. Madam, leaving you is quite out of the question. Don't be stupid, James. What would you do there? Your place is here. You must prepare my return. Madam, I won't insist. Adventure is not an integral part of my action functionalities. Maybe you're right, madam. As ever. Do I understand correctly that you're going to go with me to Comcallsgrad? You do, my dear. We're going on tour, my dear. Anchors away! I'll go back to the airship to prepare my departure. You can join me there when you're ready. James! Take me to my room. I must prepare. Quick! Quick! What are you waiting for? My fans are waiting for me. Are you sure you're sure about this, madam? Shut up, James, and put your foot on it. Okay, let's head back to the airship. Come on, Kate, where are you going? Just 
Still watching the game, I see. So this pretty much concludes it, I think, for this one. Grr, with these people. Hello? Hi, it's me, Olivia. Hey, sweetie, what's new? How was it at the Goldbergs, then? Like, uh, alcoholic. Is that all? What's up? Cat got your tongue? Well, tell me what you're up to. How's the case going? How's that romance key chick? You don't think it's dragging out too long? I haven't had the time to get bored, I can tell you that, but... Hey, Olivia, what's the matter? You didn't even answer my question. That's so unlike you. Did I tell you I bought this really cool blue silk top? Olivia, what are you hiding? Come on out with it. You've got me worried. Oh, Kate, I'm sorry. I've done something horrible. I can't sleep anymore. I... I can't eat. I keep wanting to hurl. Olivia, tell me what's going on. It's Dan! What about Dan? Has something happened to him? I am... weak. You're gonna hate me for the rest of your life, and you'd be right in your situation. I... What? Uh -oh. After the Goldberg, Dan took me home. Uh -oh. We were a bit, you know, we shouldn't have drunk so much. He came up to mine to have a nightcap and then... Okay, you're gonna hate me. Please hate me. I got it. It's all my fault. I could never tell you that I've had the hots for Dan for ages. Because you're my friend and you were engaged and all, but... But then we got so close lately, and I, I just lost sight of what's right and what's wrong. I, Kate, the guilt is killing me. I want to die. Look, don't bust a gut over it. You and Dan, it's it's like not real right now. I gotta go, Olivia. I, I need to process this new bit of data. Are you like some automaton or something? <laughs> Kate, please. I'm hanging up now. I want to be on my own. I'm not that surprised. I mean, I already played the game. I already know what happens. It, yeah, whatever, you know. It's good to see personal life of Kate, but... Boring for me, anyway.
Okay, that concludes this episode of Siberia, and we will continue on with the conclusion the conclusion of Siberia in the next episode, and it will probably won't be very long. It'll probably be very short, because there's not much left to do in this game. Yeah, that was very intense. Um, we got to see a little bit more of... What's her name? Kate, wow. We, we uh, got to see more of Kate's personal life. You know, it, it, all the drama with her friend and with her fiancé, but... You know, again, with the dialogue, it just goes on and on, instead of getting to the point. But it's still good to see what's happening there. With her, it doesn't seem like her relationship's uh, doing that well. And now we also see that Miss Helena Romanski is trapped. So, a lot's gonna happen in a short amount of time in the next episode. So, so that's it for today, and I hope you uh, have a great day. See you next time.